six. Uh, 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 we have done that, and the uh, Fano's inequality uh, convergence is of uh, random variables and uh, uh, asymptotic equipartition property. Okay, so after that, things will become easy, All right? So where is it? Fano's inequality. Uh, so Fano's inequality is very important uh, for information theory. Um, in channel coding theory, uh, when we want to prove it, right, uh, this one is uh, used there. So it is very important. And then I believe, uh, you know, uh, in the era of uh, you know machine learning classification and so on, I think uh, this type of inequality will uh, also be very useful. Okay, it will provide a form uh, bound. That's why it is important. So. Uh, this is a very general problem that uh, uh, stated right there. Basically, consider the problem of send x, so input, and then observe y for this input, right? Over a channel. So this channel can be a physical channel or your AI model, right? So AI model is basically a function, but this function is not perfect, right? It has some error in it, right? So we can uh, design that this way. Send X, receive Y. Now you want to make an inference on something about X. Imagine that, okay? So send X, you make an observation, and then you do some signal processing that is G of Y, okay? So we have a Markov chain from X to Y2. X prime. X prime is uh, basically G of Y. So you want to make certain, uh, this could be deep neural network, for example. You make certain pro signal processing to uh, make a guess on the uh, input X, right? So, and then once you made an input, uh, you know, make a you know, best decision about X, then you would like to compare this X prime, which is G of Y. Uh, with the uh, true x, right? And then you can calculate the uh, probability of error, so uh, yeah, error rate in your simulation program, right? And then if uh, the probability of error is very large, then you would like to improve your model, basically improve this g, so that you can get as uh, close to the, you know, the true, uh, you know, uh, bound, basically. So, that bound uh, is uh, basically, uh, in this case, uh, is related with the Fano's inequality. <clears throat> so Fano's inequality here relates the probability of error. So the probability that your guess is wrong, right? You, you make an inference about x, but uh, your guess uh, in uh, often, often times it is, uh, is going to be wrong, right? And then you want to make this as small as possible, the probability of making error, right? And then, since uh, entropy we have learned uh, so far is, uh, uh, can uh, have a potential to provide you with a fundamental bound, right? So uh, you can uh, try to relate this uh, probability of making error of your decision um, with the entropy of x given y. So why I have chosen this entropy of x given y? Because uh, you are trying to uh, make an inference about x after you have received y, right? So that's the uh, fundamental uh, measure uh, because of that, okay? So what is the relation between PE and entropy of x given y, okay? So we can start with the easy one first, right? Uh, uh, suppose that uh, given y, you can perfectly tell about x what is going to be h of x given y. Suppose. Why is per you, you made a perfect inference tool about x, right? So there is no error at all. Then what is going to be h of x given y? <laughs> Zero, right? Because there is no uncertainty. But, but uh, you know, in, in general, can you assume that? In general, you cannot assume that, right? So basically, 
uh, this entropy of x given y is, uh, you know, given y, the entropy of x can be reduced, right? Because there is some relation between x and y, right? But, uh, you know, how, but the, the residual uncertainty given y, right? That's what this one is, right? Entropy of x. There is certain uncertainty about the input given y. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so we can uh, relate this probability of error with uh, this. If this uncertainty is greater, probability of error probably is greater, right? If this uncertainty is small, then the probability of, of error probably small, right? So they have a relation, right? But uh, what is that relation exactly? That's what we will talk about. Okay. Uh, so we already know entropy of x given y greater than or equal to zero uh, with the equality if and only if x is a function of y, right? We have done that, okay? And uh, <clears throat> then basically probability of your decision being wrong is equal to zero if and only if this uh, uh, entropy h of x given y is equal to zero, okay? That, that's what I said. So uh, thus we expect small p for small entropy, conditional entropy. If the con conditional entropy is small, then we expect p to be small, right? But if you, obviously if you screw up in your model selection and training and so on, right, of your neural network, P will be very large, right? Because you have done stupid job, right? But if you have done uh, excellent job, right? Probably that would be very close to the fundamental bound. Okay, that's that's the idea. Okay, that's the motivation for uh, studying Fano's inequality. Okay, all right. Having said that, now let's uh, uh, pin down the exact relation. Okay, how much we can tell, right, between these two things. Okay, so here is the thought experiment. Uh, basically, when you do a classification problem, you have a population, right, for one uh, variable, and the other one for the other one. So maybe you can make a binary decision, right? Uh, set one, set two. But uh, if you have uh, these two uh, cloud po uh, points, are well separated with each other, right? If you can find the such feature space, then the classification error will be close to zero, right? Because these two populations are well separated, right? But most of the time, do you encounter such a problem? No, right? Most of the time, these two clouds are close to each other, right? So in this uh, case, you can, uh, when you uh, examine your data set, right, you draw the cloud point, scatter, scatter plot, right, then ah, these two clouds are uh, close to each other, right, then uh, uh, you would expect the probability of error by counting the number of overlapped, uh, you know, vectors, <laughs> right? So that's what it is, okay? So, you know, imagine that and then think about this problem, okay? So there is, uh, in this uh, cloud example, this part where there is no overlap, you would make no decision error, right? Same here, right? No decision error. But most of the decision errors are the gray region, the overlapped region, right? Where these two clouds are mixed up together, right? So whenever you have an input from such a set, you would end up decision error, right? So imagine that, okay? <clears throat> and uh, here, this is the input set, right? So I have this uh, uh, element, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So when, whenever you uh, send the seven, <coughs> you will receive this y, right? And then whenever you send eight, you receive this, okay? And whenever you send the three, you uh, receive y2, okay? Whenever you send 4, you receive y2, okay? So 
the circle means this many to one mapping, right? You send three, you receive y2. You send four, you receive y2. You send five, you uh, receive y2, and so on, right? And then, uh, basically, after that, you have received, then you do signal processing or some, some type of mapping from y to x prime. So basically, uh, when, whenever you receive y1, you will make a decision, this one, which is element number one, okay? Whenever you receive y2, you, 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 you have designed your program to map it to third element, which is this one, okay? And then you receive this one, seven, you receive this one, eight, okay? Got it? So you have classification of four objects, right? Because there are three, uh, four decision points, which is one, three, seven, eight, okay? All right, so that's the, that's the you know, scenario. Third experiment, very simple one, so that we can clearly think about the problem. But you can extend this to any other set, right? More complex sets, right? So uh, Y1 observed uh, two possibilities, these two, right? To be the input. Then given Y1, you are making this binary choice. Is, it, is this one or two? But you have already done that, right? You have designed your mapping relation, X prime, right? So in this case, what would be the error event? In this particular case, if you send the two, it'll end up error, right? Because you will decide it to be one, right? That's the that's the setting, okay? My setting, simplified. So, but uh, you can uh, always, uh, you know, broaden it and uh, generalize it for your model, okay? So, in that particular case, Y1, if you receive, you have a probability of error of half, right? Because when you send one, no error. When you send two, error, right? And then equally likely uh, transmission of this, uh, 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 you know, between the two, okay? making that assumption. And then Y2 observed, let's say you observe Y2, then there are four possibilities of input. So uncertainty is greater or small. Then the uncertainty, you observe the y uh, Y1. Greater, right? Because there are four out of one now, right? So that's the amount of uncertainty after you have received Y2. Okay, how about, uh, is there uh, any uncertainty at all for uh, y is equal to seven? No. Y is equal to eight? No, right? So uh, now uh, you, you have a clear picture of what we are doing, right? All right, so y to observe the four possibilities on x, so probability of error is three out of four, right? Because anyone, uh, out of this set four, five, six, it'll end up error, right? Now we can divide the set, this set into two disjoint set. Those sets either uh, uh, incur errors, which is two, four, five, six, right? The, when, whenever input was this, it's an error, right? Whenever uh, Input was this, there is no error, right? And then, but if you change this uh, rule, the mapping rule, so like, let's say you improved your AI model, it will change, okay, it will change. But for a given particular scenario that I have explained, this is true, right? All right, so that's that. So far, so good. Is there any question for this one? Okay, then. We move on. Now, okay. So this is Fano's inequality. It's uh, a one page. So <coughs> entropy of PE, the probability of error. It's a binary, so I just need a single parameter. And then PE times log of the size of the alphabet of the input set, X, minus one, this one is greater than or equal to 
entropy of x given y. Okay, that's the that's the Fano's inequality. And then uh, since I want to uh, arrange things so that I can uh, evaluate the relation between p e and h of x given y, so I move things around and then I obtain this. Okay, the, so the probability of error is lower bounded by entropy of x minus 1 divided by log of size of the alphabet. So this is the uh, lower bound, lower bound, okay, of your problem setting, okay. Given the problem, you, you, you try to design your AI model, but uh, no matter how much effort you put into your AI model, you cannot improve uh, better than this bound, okay? That's what it is, okay? So if you are close to this number, if your AI model is uh, achieving probability of error close to this number, you could be satisfied, okay? And then you can show that I have achieved it. So uh, the, the, this bound by, uh, let's say, uh, with the 0 0.001 accuracy, right? Then, then you are done, right? Basically. So uh, that's the motivation again. So uh, what about the proof? Is this true? That the question part, okay? So for that, we will uh, consider a utility random variable. We will define random variable E to be binary random variable, which is one if there is an error, if the, if the decision is wrong, and zero if the decision is right, okay? So one or zero. So uh, what is the distribution of this random variable? Given the notation so far, what is the distribution? Binary, and then what is the parameter? P, P, okay, good, P. So uh, E is equal to one with the probability P E. E is equal to zero with the probability one minus P E. Okay, so that's a binary random variable. So you just you you just uh, define this to uh, uh, you know draw the result basically. So uh, it's a utility random variable <coughs> you can use. And then uh, we can consider entropy of E and X given Y, okay? So E and X jointly given Y, okay? So you, we can now use the chain rule, right? Chain rule of entropy. So that can be written as entropy of X given Y plus entropy of E given X and Y, right? That's one way. And then the other way, uh, we can do this first. Right? Entropy of E given Y plus entropy X given Y and E. So these two must be the same. These two lines must be the same. Okay? Now, uh, is there a, uh, so we can consider these four items. Is there a, um, uh, an item that we can get the answer right away? Let's see examine. This one is the our objective, right? So we, we don't we don't know. How about this one? It says x and y is given. And then is there uh, any uncertainty on E? That's the question, right? So what is this one going to be? Zero? Why? Because of this, right? Okay? So if y is given, then g of y is given, then basically you know if error has occurred or not, okay? Because x and y input and output are given, then you can exactly specify what e should be, right? So there is no uncertainty, okay? So this part is zero, aha. Then uh, we can remove this part and then we can have this uh, uh, relationship between these three, okay? So as you can see, we have a three terms right here, right? 
So we have removed one. We have removed one, so we are getting there, right? So move to the next page. Like we have, uh, you know, expected, this part is uh, uh, set equal to zero because this is zero all the time. Given input and output, uh, there is no uncertainty of whether your decision is right or wrong. You immediately know that, right? So this one is zero. Then uh, this is our objective. Then we need to analyze these two. We need to analyze these two. So this one is uh, entropy of E given Y, right? But uh, this one uh, uh, can be upper bounded by entropy of E. Why? Conditioning reduces uh, entropy, or mutual information is greater than or equal to zero, right? So this one, you can explain that like that. And then this one is binary random variable, so entropy of PE. This binary random variable's parameter is PE, so H of E can be written as H of PE, right? So binary random variable is less than or equal to one. Entropy of binary random variable is less than or equal to one. And then uh, this part uh, we obtained, what we want, right? How about this next part, the last one? So last one, let's consider. And then use uh, the evaluation rule of uh, conditional entropy. So, so this uh, has two conditions, Y and E. So let's do one by one. So we will do it by uh, E first, okay? So probability of E is equal to one, and then entropy of X given Y and E is equal to one, okay? And then prob probability E is equal to zero, and then uh, entropy of X and Y, E is equal to zero. And then here I said, uh, I can streak this out to be zero. Can anyone can explain why? In plain English, you give an accent. How about explain? Error of Dagger Sinica. Why did I mean that this is only Matar and Gotana? There's an uncertainty of Joe. 그죠? 그러면 <웃음> 어, 얘는 0입니다. 그러면 so we don't have to consider this part, right? Because it is zero. Now we have to consider that part, first part only. Now uh, this one is still a random variable, so we have to evaluate for all particular cases of y, right? So we are we are doing it right here, okay? So we have to take the summation of y, multiply it. This one by P of Y, right? So that's the expectation, right? And uh, this one is, by definition, it is a P of E. By definition of the random variable E, right? That's the probability of making error. So um, that's what we have to do, okay? Now, but we know uh, this one here, right? Uh, is the one that we have considered in previous page. Remember, in previous page, when y is equal to y1, what, what, how much was the uncertainty? It was between the two, right? When it was y is equal to 2, it was between the four elements, right? Amongst the making a decision. So that's the uncertainty, right? When y is equal to 1, binary uncertainty. When y is equal to y2, it was a 40 uncertainty, right? When y was equal to 3, no uncertainty. y is equal to 4, no uncertainty, right? So uh, in general, if you know more about your problem, you can go uh, deeper and then make a tighter bound, right? You can make a tighter bound if you know more about your data set, right? This is a general bound that we will give you, okay? 
because of the general uh, base uh, uh, in terms of h over x given y. Okay? So in this particular case, uh, this here, right, this uncertainty of x given y and e, right? This one is uncertainty about x, right? So it is going to be uh, upper bounded by what? h of x, right? And then since this one says error has been made, your decision is wrong, right? Because e is equal to 1. Then uh, what, are, what are the other possibility? The true transmitted one and then rest of them, OK? That's why we have to take away by one, the transmitted one. True answer, right? Exclude that, rest of them uh, uh, will give, provide you with the uncertainty. So this one is upper bounded by this one, okay? But in our particular case, that can be lower bounded, I mean, that can be tightened but in our particular uh, example, right? For the, when y1 was uh, equal to 1, uncertainty between the two. And then it says error has been made. In, part, in that particular case, you exactly know what x is, right? Because it says error has been made, right? Aha, that, was, that is basically the second element. So there is no uncertainty for y is equal to 1. But uh, how about y is equal to 2? Transmitted one, take away, and then rest of them. So basically, in that case, uh, uh, size of the alphabet is 4 minus 1, right? <clears throat> so that's uh, you know, uh, what this one is. But in this uh, general case, uh, we can upper bound it by the size of the entire set, because it is always true, right? So uh, that's a huge upper bound, right? Okay. So you have you, you can use this, and then this is upper bounded by p e log size of the alphabet minus one. Okay. So that's uh, the explanation, and uh, that's the result of uh, Fano's inequality. So h of x given y is uh, less, uh, less than y equal to entropy of p e p log uh, size of the alphabet minus 1. Okay? And then uh, making a still upper bound because h of p e is always smaller than y equal to 1. You can use 1 instead of h of p e as an upper bound. Yeah. Mm. p e? Ah, 그거는 uh, uh, y가 특정이 됐을 때. 여기서 p 는 어떤 y든지 인풋과 아웃풋이 특정이 안된 general p, 그죠? 아웃풋이 특정했을 때는 그렇다는 거고. 이제 됐죠? 그래서 p 는 어디에 디파인 됐냐? 여기 이, 이전 페이지로 가보. 아 여기. 아 여기에 디파인 되죠. 요거. 요거. 디시전이 맞으면 이는 영이고 디시전이 틀리면 일이라고 했으니까 이건 전체죠. X and Y 전체. 그거? 그건 컨디셔널 프로버빌티지. y가 y라는 랜덤 베리어블이 y1이었을 때 네. 디시전이 틀릴 확률. 아, 그거 다 컨디셔널 이렇게 해 가지고 하면 보여주는데. 응. 응. 그래서 어, 그게 이제 파노스 이니퀄리티입니다. 그래서 얘를 어, 가지고 이제 할수 있는 게 많아요. 그래서 내가 이그젠플 하나를 보여줄 수가 있을 것 같은데 이그젠플이 어. 그걸 써먹은 이그젠플이 
논문 하나만 보여주면 아, 이름을 까먹어서. 아, 여기 있네, 요거. 그래서 이, 이 채널 코딩 띄어럼도 necessary and sufficient condition 찾는 건데, 네세서리 컨디션 찾을 때 바너스 이니퀄리티 있어요. 그래서 요 요게 이제 재밌는 문제인데 우리가 이런 매트릭스를 상상을 하고 그래서 어, y is a vector a a 인가 a is a matrix x is a vector. 근데 갈와 필드 벡터야 이게 다 갈와 필드 오브 사이즈 m 엘레먼트가 알파 필드에서 파이널 셋에서 하는 거예요. 그래서 이 A라는 매트릭스가 생긴 게 이렇게 생겼어. 옆으로 길고 세로로는 짧아. 그러면 어떻게 되겠어요? 여기가 세 엘레먼트고 여기는 뭐한 엘레먼트가 열 개다. 그러면 이게 텐이다. 이게 3 정도 되고 이게 그러면 x1서부터 x10까지 있겠죠? 10 element, right? 근데 uh, this is the compression that we do, right? And then given y, we want to find x. 가능해요? So given y, we want to find x. So here, given observation y, find x. 이런 문제야. 가, 일반적으로 이게 가능해요? 아니, 문제가 있어요? 없어요? Is there a problem or not? Problem 있겠지. 그죠? 왜냐하면 어, 이거를 만족하, 어, 이, 어, 이, 이거를 만족하는 X가 엄청나게 많으니까. 그지? Not a one problem, one solution, but many. 그지? So we need to have some kind of a guideline to find a single X. So in, in such a guideline can be designed this way. So minimum L0 norm. 이렇게 하면 유니크하게 찾을 수 있겠잖아요. L2 놈 찾듯이. L2 놈으로 한 거는 뭐죠? 그게? Least Square Estimation 이잖아. 근데 우리는 갈와 필드에서 하니까 안 돼, 그게. 그래서 L0 놈으로 하는 거예요. L0 놈이 뭐냐면, 넌제로 밸류의 개수, 그죠? 넌제로 밸류의 개수를 가지고 어, 찾는 겁니다. 요거를 만족하는 어, L0 솔루션을 주세요. 이러, 이렇게 문제를 낼 수가 있어요. 그러면 어, 여, 이 경우에서 이 경우에서 아, 어떻게 찾아야 될것 같아요? 컴퓨터 프로그램을 짠다 그러면. 0의 개수가 아, 넌제로 엘레먼트의 개수가 작은 것부터 찾아볼 수 있겠네. 그죠? 그러면 
0 벡터는 놈이 아예 0이니까 그거는 0이 나올 테니까 안될 거고 그러면 서치를 해보려고 하면 뭐부터 해야 돼? 1 그러면 10 choose 1 개의 벡터 패턴을 찾죠 넌 제로 패턴 그치? 그러면 첫 번째 것만 1이고 나머지는 전부 0인 거두 번째 것만 일이고 나머지는 전부예요. 뭐 이런 식으로, 그죠? And then it has, it has to satisfy this relation. 그래서 observation하고 부합을 해야 돼. 그런 식으로 찾아 나오면 되겠죠. 그 다음에 아, 여기서 찾아봤더니 안 나오네. 그럼 또뭐 해야 돼요? 2로 높이자. 그죠? 2로 높여서 또 찾아보고, 3으로 높여서 찾아보고 이렇게 해요. 그렇게 해서 이제 찾는 건데 그렇게 하더라도 이제 에러가 나올 수가 있죠. 에러가 언제 나올까? 그렇게 해서 찾을 수 있는 거에 한계가 없, 있을까 없을까? 그걸 퀀티파이 할수 있을까? 한계를 그런 문제에 쓰는 거예요 지금 파노스 이니콜로티가 오케이 그러면 여, 여기에서 보면 이, 엔, 이, 이 벡터의 엔트로피는 어떻게 됩니까? 그냥 h of x라고 쓰면 되지 뭐 그지? 그리고 얘는 h of y 그죠? 그죠? 근데 만약에 다시 좀 깨끗하게 써서 h of x가 h of y so we have these two uh, case and then if I have given you a problem like this like this if I have given you a problem like this with the dimension and the size of the g a l o p h i l I have given you a problem like that Right? 그러면 에러가 존재해요? 안 해요? 그것만 이해하면 돼. <웃음> 아웃풋의 스페이스가 담을 수 있는 그릇의 크기가 인풋의 크기보다 작대. 이건 무슨 맵핑이야, 이게? 매니 투원 매핑이잖아. 그죠? 매니 투원 매핑. 에러가 안 생길 수가 없겠네. 답이 나와야지. 그지? 그래서, if I have given uh, this problem, then you can calculate this and that. Aha, uh -huh, there is an error possibility. 그죠? Then we can talk about probability of making error. And then we can find the upper bound and lower bound. Right? And then we can uh, try to tighten this upper and lower bound. Very close to together, then we can tell much about how much probability of error uh, it will incur. So now, if I change my problem to be this, what would you expect? If I have changed the inequality the other way, so output space is much larger than the input space. 이 경우에는 옵티멀한 솔루, 어, 솔루션 파인더라 그러면 1대1 맵핑 관계를 찾아내겠지. 그건 no error. No error. <웃음> so you, you could design a no error mapping relation between the input and output. 그, where is that no error mapping relation defined? 이게 your, that's your AI model, way in matrix, things like that. 그지? 카페스티는 있는데 모델이 잘못됐어. A가 그 로우가 다 디펜던트야, 서로. 그러면은 엉터리 디자인이잖아. 그러면 풀 포텐셜을 다 먹지 못할 테고 그럴 때는 이제 작아지 오케이 okay, 자 이런 걸 보려고 하면 이 논문을 한번 보세요. 그래서 AI라고 AI 한다고 해서 그냥 
어, 데이터만 얻어가지고 자꾸만 남의 학습 모델 그거 가지고 돌리기만 하지 말고 생각하는 문제를 좀 해야 돼 이런 걸. 아 그거 여기 그거는 이따가 아 이따가 아니로 아니고 채널 코딩 띄어럼 프로브 할때 나오니까 유니언 바운드라고 그때 또 얘기해 줄게 그거 지금 <웃음> 너무 너무 힘들어져 그래서 여기는 로우 바운드 프로버블리티 오브 에러의 로우 바운드를 배운다 굉장히 중요하다 이거 실전에 많이 써먹는다 그죠? 그리고 갈로 앞에 있는 뭐예요? 갈로 앞에 있는 파이널 필드 몰래? 어, 파이널 필드 갈로아가 총싸움하러 가기 전에 하룻밤 만에 그 정리해서 논문 썼잖아 그래갖고 갈로아라는 사람 이름 따라서 지은 거죠 파이널 필드 파이널 필드가 뭔지 아는 사람 저기 저기서 하죠? 그 뭐지? 전산 수학에서 배우죠. 정수론에 나오고. 정수론에. 그지? 배웠죠? 안 배웠나? <웃음> 아니, 좌우지게. 가령 뭐, 3 해봅시다. 3. Final field of size 3. 뭐, 이런 거. 연산은 어떻게? Final field에 곱하기 더하기 나누기 빼기를 정의하면 되죠. 근데, Final field라서 곱하기하고 더하기만 하면 돼요. 곱하기 어떻게 해요? 더하기 어떻게 해요? 그것만 물어보면 돼. 곱하기 어떻게 하지? 모두 3 하면 되지. 그래서 에, 이, 요, 요게, 요게 M이 그 프라임 넘버면, 프라임 넘버면 그냥 모두 of that prime number, uh, the set size, 그거 하면 돼. 근데 프라임 넘버가 아닐 경우에는 이제 모두 3 같은 걸로 안 돼. 그때는 이제 테이블을 정의해 줘야 돼. 이렇게 테이블을. 가령 4, 이건 소, 어, 프라임 넘버 아니죠? 이럴 때는 이렇게 해야 돼. 그지? 아니, 아니지. 이렇게. 그러면, 어, 곱하기 테이블하고 더하기 페, 테이블 주세요. 그러면 돼요. 그러면 찾으면 되고. 오케이. 그게, 그게 파이널 필드야. 이두 가지 연산에 아무거나 두 숫자 끌어 잡아 댕겨.